Hello everybody. So thank you for all the likes and subscribes and the comments. Please keep them coming. And if you're not subscribed, uh, please do so. You can just press the subscribe button. And that means if you've got notifications on, then when I release my videos, you'll uh, know about it. So what I wanted to do today was to talk to you about uh, play, exploration, uh, the front end of warming up really, uh, where you uh, start off with no intention in mind, but it gets you going ready for a painting session. And what I've been finding is, and uh, behind me I've got four ongoing Edgelands larger pieces, which I've talked about previously. And what I'm finding is that the more I'm working on paintings, and if they're going for a while and I'm putting layer upon layer, there's a tendency for me to get tighter and tighter. So whereas at the very beginning stages I'm very loose and I don't have much intention in mind and I'm trying to get layers of paint and collage down, that's not so much of a problem. But as, as I go on with them, if I'm not careful, I get too precious and that tightens everything up and it's really I don't find very good for the painting. So what I do is a warming up uh, for 10 to 15 minutes, no big deal, uh, just to get me going before I work on the panels. And I'm finding that it does make a big difference. So what I want to do today in a minute, I'm gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna show you a couple of ways in which I warm up. One is on a sort of more of a, a larger piece of paper. The other one is working smaller, but with limitations that help me to, to, to generate that kind of playful mindset and explorative mindset, if you like. So, um, but before I do that, I just wanted to mention, and I'll put it into the notes for this video, that I've talked for a while about the Edgelands and the fact that um, the works, the bigger works, are going to be for an exhibition called Landscape Inside Out early in 2022 at Gallery Oldham. But I'm also releasing smaller works, and I've just released some very small panels of the Edgelands works, the very first of them. Uh, and uh, I've already sold a couple, but I'm going to put a link to the website where you can see them. But here, if you can see, I have the four that are still available. So if you're interested in that, then please click the link and you'll uh, be uh, taken to my website so you can see them in more detail and then subsequently where you can actually uh, buy them. So I just thought I'd mention that. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera around now and share with you some of my warming up approaches. Okay, so I'm sitting on the floor for this, which is not ideal unless you're going to be working for short periods of time, but I reckon that this was probably the best way that you were going to be able to see it. Um, and I do like to, to work on the floor quite a bit anyway, so this is more representative of what I usually do. So um, just to run through briefly what I'm actually using, I've got an indigo pastel, I've got some ink, and I've got some charcoal. Those are the main three things. And then I've got some white acrylic paint that I just use to uh, simplify, uh, to pare back any uh, of, the, of the image that I feel like um, you know, towards the end. Anyway, so I will get going and I'm hopeful that you'll be able, this is just an A2 piece of cartridge paper, 220 gram, and I'm just gonna get going. And I'm just gonna be loose with it. I've got the Edgelands in my mind, so hopefully I'm gonna sort of channel that a little bit and uh, you'll see how I go and I'm probably not going to say very much when I'm working because it just helps me if I can just focus on what I'm doing uh, and um, I'll just sort of briefly show you at the end. Okay, so I'll get going. want to do some editing. So I'm going to use the white paint. Hopefully you can still see. Yes, you can. And I don't want those sides looking as samey as they do. So I'm going to just make some of this. And this is just to keep me in the mindset of not being precious and of getting into that mind of actually editing things out and not being precious about doing that. And oftentimes it just helps you 
just to see things without being too. It doesn't always work, but I'm just getting it so that I don't have things looking too samey. And also to breathe, to, you know, to bring some breathing space back. I often, you know, put far too much on a painting. And by getting into this mindset of taking a lot, a, a lot of it away in this warm up, it kind of helps me to have that mindset of, of pairing back. If that makes any sense whatsoever. And I'm probably just going to leave that there. Just, it's just a warm up. It's not supposed to be a finished image. But it just gets me into the thinking mode of editing, not being precious, creating different marks and uh, yeah, something a bit, a bit more loose. And I might just take some of that away or even just a bit of it away so that it divides that piece up. It's just about playing around with things, really. So anyway, you can see how loose. And then I could obviously just come back in with some scraping through, which I quite like to do sometimes. Different marks. OK, so that is just a what I would call a warm up. It's not supposed to be a finished image but it gets me into the mindset of thinking about shapes and lines and mark making. And that's kind of the point really, creating a variety of marks. And oftentimes that's what you're then gonna subsequently do in the painting. That's, that's just a sort of, just to show you how I do it. Keep it simple, simple materials, just get going, no thinking involved, put a mark down, respond to it, put another mark down. If you want to edit back to simplify, just use some, some white paints and big, big marks. And, and that's how I go with it really. And I might do several of these as a warm up. Okay, so all change now. So now I'm on the bench and I have a very small piece of paper, which is sort of postcard, postcard size. Um, and the idea with these, just to sort of say that I've got a colour palette. What I've been doing in the last day or so is working out and developing my colour palette for my spring woodland work. And that's what you can see here, I mean, playing around with different blues and then working out that I want to use Pathalo blue with lemon yellow to create my lime greens and then to use that blue to create other colours. So I've got uh, a, a palette here, a wet palette, say wet palette, my own, which is greaseproof paper over some soggy, soggy tissue. And I'm going to use predominantly three colours. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to limit the time. So you'll see me working for three minutes or less um, on this small uh, piece of paper, which isn't even postcard size. Uh, it's somewhere, it's probably around A6 ish. So uh, it's A4 cut into two, cut into two again. So A4 cut into two goes to A5, A5 cut into two again. So it's about A6. So, um, and the idea here is that I'm trying to use a range of marks. I'm gonna use probably three colors in the white of the paper. So I'm gonna use my blue, my lime green, and my ready brown color. And what I'm trying to do is to create pieces that have got tension, that aren't necessarily neat, balanced images. So uh, we have a tendency to kind of normalize and balance everything. And with these, I'm just trying to push it and have things hanging off the edge and coming in from the sides and maybe, um, you know, sort of a little bit sort of uh, tense. And so uh, I'm going to get started. So three minutes and I'm just going to use some simple tools. I've got some just different brush sizes. So um, I'm going to just get going. Now, I don't know exactly the three minutes because I'm using. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to try. And stay within three minutes. Don't have to just use those brushes in a 
consistent way, you can use them in a different way. Okay, so I'm going to use my trusty blue, which actually has got some red in it, so it's not as bright blue as I'd hoped, but no matter. So I want to kind of try and create a bit more interest in that. So what am I going to do? I don't know. I'll do that, I think. How long have I been going for? Just trying to work out the time. It's not hard to see the clock. Um, and I could, if I thought I was over egging it, could just get some white space back into it if I wanted. So I might just do that. Get some white space back in. Not the best one, but you see what I'm trying to do is trying to just being really simple with it. Um, only minimal colours, trying to make it a bit more sort of edgy. Um, and trying to have things a little bit out of what looks like a nice balanced image. So things hanging off the edges, things a little bit more edgy, things a little bit more unusual maybe. So, I'm going to leave that one there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, bring on some of the others I've got in a minute. Okay, so I thought I would finish by sharing with you these five pieces uh, and these constitute three minutes each so they constitute a sort of 15 minute warm-up if you like and this was the one that uh, I've just shown you that I've I just just did and these four um, I've subsequently done and I'm using you know different different marks um, but as I say I'm trying to kind of create tension so you can see things hanging off the edge coming in from the sides or being sort of pulled away um, and actually doing something different, actually sort of pushing the mark making as well, but doing it all in three minutes. So it's almost like a, a thumbnail, um, but with just a, with a, without obviously the subject matter in front of you and just, uh, just, just, just going for it really. And with three minutes, you can't get fiddly. You can't, you just have to make marks and react and react. And, you know, then the three minute buzzer goes. So, uh, it's, it's a, it's it's a, it's a good way, even though they're tiny. Um, it's quite a nice way of warming up, depending on what you're doing. It's just another approach that you can take uh, at the beginning of the day to get your mind into the subject matter, but in a very very loose way. So thanks very much for watching, and please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.